All right, Coach, welcome back. Uh, talk to us about another uh, another victory and uh, just how you how you evaluate your team now a month into the season. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the victories of the the end goal, the what you want to all the work you do all week long. You want to make sure that you're coming away on Saturdays with uh, success in the in the scoreboard. Uh, you know, it's, it's a zero sum game and. While we do way more than just want to win on the field, we want to help these guys win in life, become life champions. I think if you look at that, the way it, the the product is on Saturday night, uh, it was good to see the the collective buy-in on all three phases. It was good to see a lot of uh, newcomers start to step into roles that are of a more veteran type of uh, contribution. And it's just, it, you know, it's, for me and my perspective as a head coach, I, I felt collectively as a, a team, you saw a team performance out there and I was very excited for that you know we got a long ways to grow still too uh, and we're going to get after it again this week but I thought it was a great game for us to evaluate the entire team on it and really find some key nuggets that we need to improve. Um, Coach I noticed uh, um, another uh, great game from Kurt Scobie. Um, yeah. Talk about him yeah he, I mean he, he was obviously had good games er, early on but he's been over 100 in the last the last couple of games just yeah. talk about what he's meant to to your team. Well, I think Scooby's Scooby's a, a, a great uh, addition to our team, and then what I appreciate about Scooby the most is his work ethic to keep learning, to keep understanding, to take the coaching, to to, to change, and to become the type of player we believe he can become. So every day at practice, you see a guy who's one of the hard, hardest working guys out there to see a guy in our one-on-one -on -one conversation with him as coaches to say, you know, um, what do I have to do to improve? And that right there, that spirit, that, that type of mindset, is that real growth mindset we appreciate. And any of all, all, all of our players, I think that goes on to a, for quite a few other positions. Uh, but when you have a running back that can, you know, produce over 100 yards of rushing, uh, that gives you a good chance to, to win the ball game. I think where you look at also this, uh, this last game, Guys like DJ Morgan and Sammy Fanua um, really started to add some things to the <clears throat> to the running game pot. Uh, you know, add that to a, to a guy like a Ryan Adams and the whole mixture. I feel like the collective running back barn is, is full. And so, but in that, the offensive line needs to really be you know uh, mentioned. And even our perimeter blocking with our receiving core. You know, I think our running backs would be the first to tell you that they don't do it on their own. But they also, but all of them have the ability to break away. All of them have the ability to, to make plays, and that's what you want from that position. Um, but I was really excited that the the offensive line took a big step forward as working as a unit. And you see some of the perimeter blocking that's happening. It's a, it's a good thing. Do they have to work with the with the backs and, and know where the, or is it just just all scheme? Well, there, there's a schematically, you're trying to create holes. You're yeah. trying to hit gaps and opportunities for the running back. So they need to know, the running back needs to know where things are fitting. Um, and in that, though, you have a running back that can make a play, can make us have a suddenness about him, to make the cut, to read the, to read the game. And that's where, you know, don't want to take anything away from, from a running back's uh, talent. Mm -hmm. It just, it's, it's an 11 to 1 ratio. It takes 11 guys to make a play work. Uh, it takes one guy to mess the whole thing up. So that 11 to 1 ratio, our team buys in and understands that, hey man, everybody does their role well, um, you're going to be all right. And uh, another good effort from your defense. Looks like they're continuing to improve from game to game, which is what you like. Yeah, well, I love the improvement. I love the fact that, uh, once again, the 11 to 1 ratio, the collectiveness of the, of the group uh, doing their responsibilities, understanding where they have to fit uh, when it comes to run fits, pass fits. Uh, you know, it's. Defense is, is, is and in football, just the football period, it's, it's the ultimate team game. Um, one guy just can't come out there and say, hey, look at me, I'm gonna, my talents you know, are going to be there and make the big difference. It's, a, it's the ultimate team game. So defensively, to answer your question, you see a group of 11 guys out there that are really knowing uh, where they need to fit. But there's a commitment to the team, a commitment to each other to say, hey, we're going to play like our hair is on fire. Um, we're going we're gonna to tackle better. I thought tackling was much better this last week. And uh, we're going to do what it takes to make our team successful, and they and they're they're catching that vision. And um, talk uh, about this week's opponent. Obviously, uh, you guys had some really good games within the last the last couple of years. Yeah, well, I think every GNAC contest is a great game, you <laughs> yeah. know. And once again, it's another league contest, and so uh, it happens to be Central Washington coming to our place, which we really take a lot of pride in playing in our place. We've got one of the best places to play. Uh, our fans are outstanding. Uh, you know, it's a, it's just a great atmosphere. So with 
Central Washington, you've got a, a group that's finding their legs, finding their rhythm. You know, in the last, they put together two wins. The defense is flying around well. Uh, I think offensively, their old line's really moving well. Uh, you know, they got um, a Jordan Todd, their running back. I think he's a, he's a special player. He's a, he's a, he's a one-step-and-go. Um, I think he's got the ability to break away. Uh, you know, they're playing two uh, quarterbacks with Lane and Nelson, and both those quarterbacks can run. And so... Uh, you've got to make sure that um, you know you prepare a great plan for them, and you also defensively you got to make sure you're you're able to match what they're doing because they're trying to create as much chaos as they can. And you see that they're scoring on defense too, and that's that's a big thing to take note of. So um, we understand that that we've got our hands full with this one, um, just like every GNAC contest, and so uh, we're going to get to work and and put together a great game plan. Coach, after this past Saturday, uh, a little more focus on the run at St. George. Like, are you, are you looking to be a little bit more balanced now? You went t less than 20 passing attempts on Saturday, a yeah. lot more on the rushing attempts. Is this going to be more of a theme to be a little more balanced? We're passing a lot early. Now we're running a little bit more according to Saturday. It's just going to be a week-to-week -week thing based on the opponent. But, uh, Stephen, it is always going to be the opponent. It's always going to be what they have. It's always going to be what is, you know, what are they presenting to us? Um, you know, Coach Carlton and the whole offensive staff, they do a very good job of knowing themselves well. And as you look at the opponent, where they're trying to attack you, uh, if you know yourself very well, you know the counter punches. And I thought this last week, we knew the counter punches pretty well, what we had. And, and it just so happened that the run game really showed off out of that. And then uh, defensively, we'll go back to that. You, yeah. um, Talk about some of the playmakers you've got you know, yeah. the, and the youngsters you have. This is kind of the point of the season where those young players, and I think you even mentioned it in practice yeah. last week, you're, you're not really new guys anymore. Yeah. Now you're part of the team, and if you've got the talent, you're there to make plays. Um, I think there were four true freshmen that played pretty significant roles right. for you on Saturday. Um, how, how are you liking the youth and how they're coming into the system and, and contributing? Yeah, I, I love the youth, and then kind of your answer the totality of your question is the number one thing is if you can play you can you got an opportunity here um, whether you're a freshman senior if you're the best guy we're going to play you and so to have the four true freshmen going out there and contributing in a significant matter um, that's a it's a compliment to who they are and their willingness to, to to take the mental stress the physical stress and find a way to succeed with that um, so it's also a, a credit to our coaching staff to how we develop talent here um, it's also just a, a Take note, it's just when you're talking, when recruits are looking for an opportunity to, for a school to play at, you say, hey, what gives you a chance to see the field sooner? But also not just see the field, but just see the field in a, um, a real significant manner that you're growing as a player. This is far greater of a step than high school is. So when our guys come here, they realize, man, this is fast, this is very physical, it's like nothing they've ever seen before. Uh, and so our coaching staff has a, it is, I think one of the best in the country about developing talent right away, getting them through the emotional stress of being a newcomer. There's a plan in place that we have. There's a lot we do in training wise. So, um, you know, I'm going to take the time to really uh, applaud my coaching staff because they know how to develop talent. They know how to get them ready sooner than later. And uh, so a true freshman has got a real chance to find success. Now in all that though, to bring it, it's also a chemistry and uh, you know, that's another thing, uh, credit to my coaching staff, that they know how to bring chemistry together. And like you said, and I do mention to the, in the, to the whole team, there aren't any newcomers anymore. And that newcomer uh, title is, can sometimes be a debilitating excuse. You know, we, we, so this is why we spend so much time and, and strategically um, putting a plan in place to get the, the newcomers into the fold quickly. So now at this time of the year, you have your team. And I thought this last week's victory really showed a whole team effort. I walked away feeling like, okay, they, they are coming together, gelling. Um, now the, the faces aren't so new anymore, and they're finally really starting to take that big step forward to exploding as a, as a whole, collective, uh, whole, uh, whole collective group. So we're going to challenge them this week. They got I me, mean, they got and just, you know, cheap challenge. We've got a long ways to go. And um, in all that, we're going to make sure we continue to develop these guys and, and bring out the absolute very best. And the, at the last, when our last snap is played this year, it's always my goal as a head coach to say, did we maximize this team? Did we maximize them the fullest? And to me, that's how you evaluate a whole year. And that's uh, that's a standard we have. My next question has to do more with uh, leadership. And, and yeah. one of the things late in the game, uh, Chad Jeffries was off the field. Yeah. Your second string offense was in, but he was 
on a receiver for not sticking with the block. Yeah. You know, the next play, uh, Elfers runs 70 yards right behind the, that same receiver same that receiver, Jeffries yeah. just had had some words with. Um, what are you seeing with, with some of those young leaders on your team? Well, you're, you're, what you see from that is guys taking ownership of the whole thing. You know, it doesn't matter the time of the game or who's in there. It's the standard. And we have a very high standard at every position and, and with our whole team. So if you're on the field for us, it's not charity time. It's not, hey, just go have fun and all that. It's, hey, there's respect the standard, play to the standard. Um, you're on the field, so take that next step. Make the, Give us that full commitment. So to see the young leaders doing what you were saying, exactly what you said we're doing, um, that to me speaks a lot that they're really the buy-in is there, the ownership is there. And that's what we need as we go to the back half of the season. I mean, this is game five now. And you know, there's six games left that we know about in the regular season. And so we've got to make sure we are uh, pouring everything into each week, each day, each opportunity just to win that day. And the leadership coming from the group now, it's, it's needed, it's timely. And so to see Chad do that and to know about that, um, that's, a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And then last thing, uh, you did talk about respecting the standard and yeah. um, that's kind of an on the field thing, but off the field, I think the standard that you and your coaching staff have of being a, a, a servant in the community is gonna be represented yeah. this week with your participation in the Coach to Cure yeah. MD program. Your coaches will be wearing that patch there yeah. um, and hosting some guests over the weekend. I just wanted to turn it over to you and. Um, let you talk about what this program means to you and just kind of yeah. how that fits into your overall philosophy. Yeah, well, you know, we, are, we are about building champions while pursuing championships. And every one of these players will go out into the professional world and we don't want them just to make a lot of money. We want them to do all that, provide well for their family, but make a difference in their community. So part of it to this week is with the coach, getting involved with the Coach Secure program uh, and helping to defeat Duchenne disease. Uh, you know, we wear these patches on the sideline to bring recognition to the to one of the one of the diseases that uh, really de debilitating to boys at a young age. And um, there has been little research about it, and it's, we're relatively young in the whole research and the investment that's gone into finding a cure for it. So anything we can do to bring more awareness to this is it's we're we're glad to do so, and we're especially glad to share the evening this Saturday uh, with Carter and and Ryan who were two young men who are battling, two young warrior men who we feel like, uh, you know, they're they're doing an amazing job of just uh, being champions in life and, and just showing you and, and my and the whole team about, hey man, this is how you be a warrior. This is how you make a difference with your life. Just keep going despite the circumstances. Um, so we're so excited to be with them. Um, another way that we're getting involved also is, uh, you know, one of our alums, Brandon Huffman, who's uh, obviously, he had done a great job professionally, but his his own daughter Avery is is battling some ch health challenges. And this Saturday, uh, we've got a fun run going on for Avery, and you know, for us to as a school to get behind Brandon and his family in this time of need, we're we're very excited to do so. And um, you know, not just our prayers, but in our actions, is trying hey, to to support that. So um, collectively, we're doing we're trying to do. Uh, when I say we're trying to win it all, we're trying to be those those men on the field that are, that are great competitors. That, that, that you know, obviously pursuing a championship, pursuing the victory with every game, with every practice. But in that, we're really looking for the key is the translation into life, and that's the big difference about this program. If it doesn't translate to life, then really, what good is it? Because you know what, this is the entertainment value is going to come and go. And believe me, we want to win a national championship every single year. We want to win a GNAC championship every single year. We want to win every game, and we're going to put every effort to that. But ultimately, it's about building champions for life and these difference makers for life. So as we're building champions, you know, the opportunity to get involved with these efforts that we're talking about, uh, it's exciting for us. These are, this is the big wins for us. Um, so in that, yeah, we're excited for this weekend, another chance to be at home. I've uh, been on the road three weeks, and now I only had one home game, so the chance of our front of our fans is exciting. So, in that, one of our number one fans, like I say, happy birthday, my mom. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. All right.